Good morning, everybody. My name is Corey Rosen, and you are listening to The Story Podcast. Today, I have a super awesome guest, Mr. Debo. Hey, 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 hey. Originally from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the lawn Debo Wilborn has been singing, producing, writing, and composing all his music for over 10 years. Debo and his band will captivate any crowd or venue. The band's diversity and musical selection creates a one-of-a-kind experience with award-winning original music and cover songs in the genres of R&B, soul, funk, blues, neo-soul, jazz, alternative, reggae, rock, pop, metal, and even country. Debo has been featured on American Idol and The Voice and has won many awards and accolades, including a Hard Rock Rising Battle of the Bands finalist, Touch Tunes Breakout Band winner, Academia, Award winner for Best Album, 2021 Central Pennsylvania Music Award winner for Song of the Year, and 2023 CPMA winner for Best R&B Artist and Best Dressed. Debo has also earned over 12 featured artist spotlights on Reverb Nation crowd picks and is ranked number one in the world on Reverb Nation's R&B artist charts. You can even hear his music featured in the AMC film in American and Hollywood with past performances at the Hard Rock Cafe Baltimore, Lincoln Financial Field, Hollywood Casino, Penn National, Hollywood Casino New York, Live Casino, Club XL, and venues from Nashville to Cape May. The grand stage is nothing new for Debo. Debo is also a frequent festival headliner at Capona, Gettysburg Wine Festival, In the Streets Festival, Temple University Homecoming, and the Blues and Brews Festival. His four award-winning albums are available on Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, Google Play, eMusic, Deezer, Tidal, and all other digital platforms. You can find Debo right here today as well. Yes, sir. What's yes, up, Debo? How you doing? Man, I, can't, I couldn't be better, man. It's just an honor and a blessing to be here on the show. Man, I've heard some of the things that you do, and it's, uh, it's just awesome to be here. Man. Thanks, man. I'm glad to have you. So let's get started. Let's dive right into it. So... When did the music bug bite you? At, at, did it come as a kid? You've only been doing it for 10 years. You're, you're much older than 10 years. Well, I tell you, uh, the music bug bit me. When I was about four or five years old, I used to compose music on this little Casio keyboard where I could do loops and, and, and all kinds of things. And, and that's kind of where I knew I had a talent. And I started developing my voice. But I had this crazy fear to perform vocally in front of anybody. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't even sing in front of my mom. It took me... 22 years of my life to break that fear. And then after that, um, I was able to, to perform and, and not have any issues. I read Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30, the parable of the talents, and that, that break, broke my fear. So that's how it happened. <laughs> so the Bible will bring a lot of things. Yeah, yeah it, 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 I'm telling you, that's what happened. Yep. So uh, 24 years of you, of you noodling around on piano, making music, uh, but not singing? Not singing. I mean, I, I would sing in the car, but uh, when, when, I, when I released my first album, my mom was so shocked. She didn't even know I had it in me. She was like, wow, I can't believe this is you. And then, you know, at that point, I started, uh, you know, performing live with my brother in a band that he established. And, and then it kind of went on and, and fused on and, and got my own band at that point. And then we just took off. Within four months, we were in like Hard Rock Baltimore and winning contests and and uh, in Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, so it, everything kind of skyrocketed with me pretty quick. And what? So what was that? Uh, uh, how old were you at that point? Um, I would say this was probably. Well, my birthday's this weekend. I turned forty this oh, weekend, so this was probably about twelve years ago, twelve, twelve to fifteen years ago. Um, and you know, once once things took off, you know, I got involved in Reverb Nation, which any artist out there that you know, are looking for a platform. Reverb Nation has been the best thing for my musical career personally. Um, you know, I learned how to use it. Uh, and, you know, I, I ranked as high as number one in the world in R&B and like in the top 100 in all genres. And there's there's millions of, of people on Reverb Nation. So uh, that really put me in certain gigs that I wouldn't have otherwise gotten on my own. And uh, that just kind of helped me take off. So that's at like 30 or something for you. Or yeah, like yeah. I'm only, I was 29s. probably like mid 20s. I mean, like late, late 20s, late 20s. Is that kind of like a, it's kind of a little bit late, don't you think? It is late. I mean, like I said, I was 22 when I broke my fear of singing and I started perform. I started, I recorded my first album immediately after that. Okay. But I didn't start performing live until about 2012. Um, and why was that? Was that just a, a stage fright thing? Well, or? no, no, no. It just, I, I, you know, I had to find a band. My brother established okay. a band. And so, 
Um, you know, I didn't really know any musicians. I came home from college and I didn't know any musicians here. So I started doing a lot of open mics and things like that, meeting people. Uh, I did a lot of karaoke. But uh, once once my brother started that band, the Hunger Before Greed band, uh, you know, months later after that thing was over, we kind of, um, you know, some of the guys reached out to me about working on a project. And so we did a song called Your Problem, which is actually on my third album, Divergent. Um, and it went so well that they were like, hey, man, this is fun. I said, if you guys want to do this, we can do it. I have all the contacts. I can get us booked. And like I said, four months later, we were in Hard Rock, Baltimore, rocking the place. How do you get those? So, well, before we get to that, what did you go to college for? Uh, electrical engineering. And I had a football, I had a full football scholarship uh, to go to Temple University in Philadelphia. Uh, I majored in electrical engineering, minored in uh, black studies. Um, and uh, I graduated in 2006. Sorry, uh, hold on. What is what is black studies in comp? I can it's, imagine it's it, black I, history, okay, black okay, history. Okay. Yeah. So okay. so like not just African American history, but like African history as well, like world history. Gotcha. So it was it was uh it, it's something I was interested in, and I had, um, you know, I, like when I was at school in in, in the summertime uh, on full scholarship, you had to take classes. They didn't all, always offer the engineering classes that I needed in the summer, so I took stuff I was interested in. Uh, and I just ended up having to take, I took enough to call in a minor, you know, so that was kind of cool. That's cool. I'm curious. What's one of the most interesting things you learned about uh, black history within that class? Uh, just, just some of the stuff about ancient Egypt. Uh, you know, it, it was, you know, called Kemet uh, yeah, yeah. at the time, you know, land of the black. And it's just, just some of the stuff I learned about the ancient cultures, like, you know, and, and Ethiopia and stuff like that. It just blew my mind where a lot of the, the, the math and the science that we have today are that, derived from, from and, and even even science like medical medical stuff mm -hmm. a lot of those procedures like brain surgery and stuff like that they came from that those cultures you know and they don't really get a lot of credit you know really the calendar we use they call it the roman calendar you know but it's it the the ancient egypts taught the romans so mm -hmm. and that was kind of cool I, I learned a lot of cool stuff you know doing that you know besides the engineering stuff that i was doing. you know one of my most favorite fun facts about egypt this is kind of a side trail but uh from the time to Cleopatra to now is shorter than the time of Cleopatra to the building of the pyramids. I well, here's another thing. This has nothing to do with black black history. But did you know that the time between T-Rex and uh Triceratops or something like that is 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 further than the time from T-Rex to us? Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, I did know that as well. So yeah, yeah that's one of those things that the, you just reminded me of. Well, uh, Here's one last fun fact. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oxford University is older than the Aztec Empire. Wow. Wow. That's all. It, that, that's not that's much crazy. time. That's you think not, it's. You would, you would think that they. Well, because, you know, the way they teach history, it's not the way. I, I have so many opinions on this. The way they teach history is okay, they, they isolate one area and they focus on a time period, but they don't collaborate with other people. Like, we bought the, the the Louisiana purchase was bought from Napoleon. I didn't clock that until until I realized oh they were around at the same. That makes total sense. It does. It does make sense. And but so I wish history was taught more of a uh, all like Abraham Lincoln could have faxed a samurai. Wow, wow, <laughs> right? That's 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 to, to think that they existed. At the same time, that's, at the same crazy. time, exactly. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> no problem, man. That's that's what this is about, you know. Yeah. So you went to uh, you went for electrical engineering. Yep. Uh, is that something you still do, or is yes, it more music? yes. I'm an electrical engineer for the Navy. Um, uh, prior oh, to that, right. I worked for the uh, for the Pentagon. Uh, so I, I have a lot of a lot, a lot of, of interesting stories. stuff that I can't <laughs> talk about, but uh, you know, but it's uh, you know, it's it's I, I, I'm I excelled in math and science. Uh, growing up in high school and, and, and so that the the natural transition for me education wise was to be either an engineer or an architect and so when i got the temple on full scholarship uh the academic advisor said listen you ain't gonna have enough time to be an architect so i said all right well i'll be an enge electrical engineer which was probably just as time consuming as being an architect but you know i, I went there for an education to, to use my brain and get a degree you know and football was just my avenue of doing that so I, mean, I came out of college debt free, which I can't really say a lot about a lot of my friends, but 
you know, it was a blessing, man. Yeah, just a blessing. not have to pay. The only thing I had to do was, was give my books back and I had to buy the ones that I wanted to keep, which that's not that bad. Yeah, $250 to go for five years and you at Temple University. Hey, I'll take it. No, absolutely. And so you went into the Navy. How long did you do that for? Well, I, 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 I work as a civilian. Uh, for the oh, federal so you're government, contractor. Yeah. No, no, I'm I'm federal, but oh. I, I just you know they hired me as a civilian, which which means I don't I don't have any military experience, but okay, uh, but you know they're they're a li- uh, civilians make up a, a vast part of the workforce, you know, in, in all sectors of the military, uh, and and the government as a whole. So, you know, and you know it's it's kind of crazy. Like I'll walk down a hall and I and I and I'll see you know someone in uniform and I'll say you know thank you for your service and they'll look at me and like thank you for your service. I'm like whoa. I never really thought about it like that, but well, we are like, serving the country. You know, so. say, without the civilians, there's no military. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. We do a lot. We do or a lot. government for that matter. Yeah. So, I mean, it starts somewhere. It starts, starts with the taxpayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Right in your pockets. <laughs> right, absolutely. Um, so, so how do you, how did you balance that and music at the same time? Because like you said, and I know electrical engineering takes a lot of time. And how do you balance that with your music creation? Because you do every aspect of your music creation from beginning. That takes a whole lot of time and money. That's correct. I really didn't do much music in college. Like um, oh, I see. when I was in school, uh, you know, my teammates would come over and we would just like kind of make beats and freestyle over them or, you know, sing. And I didn't really do a lot of recording until probably my senior year. Because at that time I was coming home a little bit more. Uh, you know, cause I had, I didn't, wasn't taking as many classes. So I would come home and I had a car. So I was coming home, you know, recording with a couple buddies of mine. Uh, we had a little group called the Hannah collab, which I was actually, actually, I started off as a rapper and I would just sing a lot of the hooks and stuff. But, uh, you know, at some point uh, my, I realized that how dynamic my vocals were, it's what I needed to focus on. So mm-hmm. I just kind of went away with the rap and just, uh, you know, started singing, uh, exclusively. And then my first album, uh, it was called Superhero. I released that in 2007, I believe. 2007. Uh, a couple of years later, I did my second coming album, which a lot of people will say that's my best album. My biggest hit called Do It is on that album. And my favorite Debo song, Moon and Back. I got a shirt on right now that says To the Moon and Back. Um, that was also on that album. Uh, I think that was released in 2014. And then in 2018, I believe, I did uh divergent and then on uh, 2021 i released uh my new uh new i can still call it new but uh, it's the album the award-winning album the cpma award-winning album uh super villain you see what's that quote you either die a superhero or live long enough to, to be a villain. villain yeah 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 that's <laughs> but you know the reason why i did that well my first album was superhero and you know i was working with some people that you know, I, I I still composed all my music, but I wasn't recording it and I wasn't doing I was participating in a production. It was like I was like a executive producer or a co-producer on my stuff. And I wasn't quite uh, wasn't quite getting the sound that I that I always wanted and I always envisioned in my head. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it myself. So Divergent, I started I started pretty much really doing everything exclusively myself, uh, you know, bringing artists, bringing musicians to, to, to me or going to them to record them, doing the mixing. Uh, I sent my music away to get mastered. That's one thing that I, I don't do is master. And that's pretty much the, I mean. I was going to say, if, if you're mixing it, you probably shouldn't be the one mastering. Yeah, you either. should. <laughs> you should. So, so then, you know, and, and then my, my super villain album is all me. It's all me. Um, everything. The only song that I didn't record was uh, Welcome to the Country, which I did that at uh, Rock Mill Studios uh, with the Garrett Schultz band and a guy named Logan Summy from Rock Mill. Uh, but the song came out of my head. I taught the Garrett Schultz band what I was thinking. Uh, and, and Garrett and the guys, they, they, they duplicated it and took my thoughts to another level. And then we recorded it there live. Uh, and then Logan put the mix on it and everything. And I, I kind of helped a little bit. But uh, other than and that was nominated for uh, Song of the Year at, at uh, last year's CPMAs. Uh, so I was so so my super villain album is the only album. Well, so two years ago I won Song of the Year for a song called "I Can't Breathe." I wrote it the day after George Floyd was murdered. The next year I was nominated for the same al- same album uh, for for Song of the Year. I did not win. And then this year I was nominated for Album of the Year for that album that had those two songs on it. Uh, so I, I don't think anything like that. I don't think anyone's had an Album of the Year with like two Song of the Year nominees on it uh, and one winner. 
but uh this it was it was it was just all these ideas you know just just stay i'm stay awake at night man because i have all these ideas that just need to come out um you know sometimes i do it with music sometimes i do it with art like drawing and painting and stuff like that sometimes i write uh but it's a lot of creativity like mixing up in that brain man i just got to get it out so let's talk about uh we have one of your songs do it you were talking about yes tell me a a little bit about it the songwriting process for that okay so you know i was um i'm a big fan of music from all eras and all genres uh, and that song was inspired by a, a an artist named Roger Troutman, uh, who who was in a band called Zap mm-hmm. back in the uh, like 70s and 80s. And uh, so I heard a song and I was like, you know what? I would really like to like not just make my own version of that, but like, you know, do something completely different, but com- clearly inspired by that. So uh, I came up with this catchy chorus, you know, do it do it Debo do it and then I was just like you know what this is really going to catch on so I got I, I had a female uh vocalist that I was working with at the time in that band that my brother established her name was Lydia Zavala and I said hey would you mind you know coming and help sing the chorus on this song she said yeah yeah I'll do it so she came in and you know all the all the musical parts in my head I taught the guys in the band they laid down the tracks and then I was like, yo, this song is so great. I'm going to enter this into a Hard Rock Rising Global Battle of the Bands contest. So every Hard Rock Cafe in the world had one of these contests, right? And the closest one to us, so I either had Philly or Baltimore. I decided to enter into the Baltimore one. And so we became like the, the voting wise, like the fan vote, we were finalists. So we, I, I ended up having to compete in person uh over two nights one the first night we won hands down like our our group our uh our competition and the second night it was like it was like a tie Mm. so i was just like so the winner of this whole global battle of the bands thing goes to like spain so you know i didn't really think that they would pick us to do that because there was i mean hundreds of hard rock cafes all over the world competing in this thing but that that um competition you know uh finaling being a finalist in that competition put us in hard rock cafes we got to perform in hard rock cafes so uh that was just kind of like the 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 rocket the ignition to this whole thing man that's awesome so let's take a listen to do it let's do it (laughs) hashtag do it Said I ain't no average man. Average man. When we get a girl, you already know that I'm better than, better than every other man that you have before me. Maybe won't you come this way? Tonight we're gonna play a little game. Meet me in the bedroom, babe. I'll be doing your ride when you say my name. You made it. 
And that was Do It, my Devo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, it's that song was so popular that people, I would be walking down 2nd Street in Harrisburg, you know, and people would, they wouldn't even say hi, D, or hi, Debo. They just start singing that. Do it, do it, Debo, do. I'm like, that's that's how people address me is that song. It's like, you know, as an artist, you always want to have that one song that makes money for you for the rest of your life. And for me, this is that song. Ooh, very nice. So that song also uh, won a Touch Tunes breakout band contest. I, I submitted that song into several contests. Um, and um, I, there was probably like 500,000 to a million submissions. I, you know, at least 500,000 submissions all over the world. And that song was one of the top, uh, the top 500 they put on touch tunes. Mm. So if you go to like a bar or restaurant with a touch tunes digital jukebox on the wall, that song uh, was, a, was a finalist in that, that, uh, that contest as well. So you can play that song. It's called Do It featuring Lydia. If you search that, uh, you find a picture of me and just, you pay me point zero zero nine cents per play, so <laughs> fatten in my pockets right, every right, time right. you play it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> being sarcastic if you can't. Right, catch of that. course, of course. So you've also been on uh, in the running for American Idol and The Voice. How was that for you? Yeah, well, those uh, they, those competitions would what, I, what I, they were actually kind of disappointing. Um, both times I, I realized that they were looking for something specific, and it wasn't me. Uh, with American Idol, you know, it's a little different than The Voice, like. You can't be on a voice unless you sing. You can sing. Right. But American Idol, they're looking for clowns. They're looking for sex appeal. They're looking for actually talented vocalists. They're looking for horrible vocalists. So um, They're looking for good TV. Yeah, good TV and ratings. Uh, so that particular year, I think it was like 2006, um, they had come to Philadelphia. It was like the last stop in their you know, contest journey. Uh, and... I had camped out like 18 hours in like February, you know, so I could be first. So, um, you know, they opened the gates and they brought us in the stadium. I got down on the floor like we were literally on the on the first row and they took the first. I was within the first 50 people that went. Um, and uh, so four of us, four of us uh, performed and the judge was like, I want to see you and you. The other two can go. So he pointed to me and this girl and he was like. I really want to give you guys this gold ticket, but I have 25,000 more people to listen to after you. So I'm holding on to it. I'm like, wow, I just camped out for 18 hours in the cold for nothing. I could have been dead last and he might have still had it. So I, when I was walking out, right, walking out of the stadium, I see this woman. She's about six foot three, 350 pounds. She's wearing this big white Ric Flair robe with feathers everywhere and a big white hat with feathers around it and blinking red LEDs everywhere. I said, she's going to get on TV. Wouldn't you know the very first person they showed to advertise that season was her. Right. I was like, man, I, I could have came here with a, with a, with a clown nose and red boots, you know, and, and a teardrop in my eye. And I, I, I would have had a better chance than actually being a talented vocalist. So that experience was that the voice was a lot better. Like, you know, that, that was kind of cool. I, I made it through a round or two, and then, uh, you know, it's like at that point, I realized what they were looking for was like 14-year-old girls because then everybody I saw running around with a gold ticket was a like 14-year-old girl. And I was like, well, yeah, 30-something, you know, gray-haired Debo. I said, you know, that ain't going to work if they're looking for a 14-year-old girl. So, you know, one of the girls that 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 they gave a ticket to that time, she was, a, you know, a contestant on TV and everything. I saw her. but. You know, they were looking for something specific. So I think I think the 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 downside of being here on the East Coast is you get everything last. Like if I lived in California, if we lived in California, they go to those places first and then they work their way east. That makes sense. And so when they come here, they already have certain things that they're looking for. And so here they just kind of filling up, picking up the pieces. They're looking for clowns on American Idol or they're looking for 14 year old girls <laughs> on the voice. So yeah, yeah, it's always it's always fun to be a part of something that you think is something else. Yeah, well, but you know what? American Idol wasn't a good experience, but The Voice was. That yeah. was that was a good experience. American Idol, I I've, I I haven't done it again since. That was that was just terrible. I, I don't recommend that. It was it was like a a bad karaoke session for like eighteen hours, man. Bad karaoke. I mean, 
you take the worst singer at karaoke. And there was 18 hours of that. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Michigan TV, though. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, they, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yep. Uh, so you've got, you came up with this. this why, why? I'm curious. You, you've you done this super villain arc mm-hmm. a little bit. Tell so, little yeah, bit I don't that. even think I told you about this. So, yeah. since my first album was Superhero, and I was kind of explaining, like, for the other two, the next two albums, I, I was still composing the music, but I wasn't producing it and mixing it. So for this last album, I kind of got back to what I was doing on my first album. Um, you know, all the even the sound, the sound, the, the composition, like even the content. Because my first album had a lot of positive content. Like I, I wrote songs about abuse. I wrote songs about, you know, obviously love and heartbreak and things like that. Uh, and just like falling down and getting back up. So I was like, you know what? I want to make another album like that. So this new album, you know, I got a song about suicide awareness um you know i got a song about social injustice that the cpma winner for song of the year uh i can't breathe i've got you know music obviously about love and heartbreak which every r&b album is like that but it's not just an r&b album it's it's rock pop funk metal you know i got the suicide puppets uh you know uh local metal band on there i got garrett schultz the country band on there i got you know my brother's featured on the album uh salvador dolly will he he raps on the album uh, on a remix for for my song Focused. Uh, and so I kind of got back to a lot of the stuff that I was doing in the first album. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, quite naturally, this this one's going to be super villain because, uh, you know, I'm kind of flipping around and just kind of returning where I was. So I, I did my super villain arc. You know, I'm really not a super villain. I'm a good no, guy. Yeah. But, but, you know, I, I I figured it would be a good marketable thing, too. Like, I I, I, I hooked up with my uh, my buddy. Um, His name is uh, Fernando Lyons. He's a comic book artist. I said, yo, man. I, and I, and I kind of drew, I draw too. So I, I, I drew a picture of kind of what I wanted. And he just took it to another level, you know, did the coloring and everything, added some like lightning and stuff between my fingers. You know, and that's very symbolic being an electrical engineer. Right, I, right, my, right. my natural superpower <laughs> should be lightning uh, manipulation, you know, electron manipulation. I'm not just going to pigeonhole myself to lightning i mean electron manipulation that's magnetism that's lightning that's all that stuff so uh so he he did the album album art and um you know for everybody i featured on the album i decided to do like a custom album cover of them and like as like a super villain that's cool so i did this garrett schultz band as super villains i did uh the suicide puppets and uh I, you guys might know jenna clay uh she's a local yeah. ra- radio personality she you know, well, we, we um, she she was like, you know, I was talking to her. I was like, yeah, um, yeah. I, I showed her the picture. She was like, yeah, I want to be a super villain. So I took a mental note. She didn't know what I was going to do with it. She she didn't know. She didn't expect anything. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to make her make make her a super villain a custom album cover. So uh, Fernando and I we put put our heads together and did that. Uh, and um, and then one day I met her at Starbucks and I was like, you know, I got something for you. Uh, and she, you know, I wrapped it up. She un- unwrapped it, and it was like this, you know, sixteen by sixteen super villain custom album cover with me and her on it. And she was just ecstatic, you know. I, I said, "Put that in your office, you know. <laughs> Let everybody see that." So we have one of, one of your songs from that, it, uh, the song of the year. I can't breathe. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about the creation process for that because that, that, that must have been a, a really personal song. For you. Very personal. Um, you know, at, at the age of sixteen, I, I my first experience with 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 police was not a pleasant one. Um, I ended up being followed by an unmarked police car out of their jurisdiction, uh, illegally searched. My friends and I were illegally searched. My, they ripped my vehicle apart illegally. Um, they held us at gunpoint. Seven cops held guns on us. They had two two dogs like ready to pounce on us surrounded us uh and then i was told you can go you know uh and and, you know i i would be george floyd if i if my father hadn't taught me at the age of 14 how to survive situations like that he told me he said you know you he said you're going to have this types of situations unfortunately he said i did you did and unfortunately your sons probably will too he said but the way to survive it he said i don't care what they ask you to do how how humiliating it is you know how uh how wrong it is when you and you know it's wrong um he said just just comply he said one night of misery 
might guarantee, you know, years and years of life after that. He said, I, he said, I want you to come home. So, um, you know, after that night, um, it, it, that, that shaped the way I feel about social injustice at a young age for the rest of my life. Uh, and so when George Floyd was tragically murdered, and that's what it was, uh, in front of all of us in this day and age, everything is video, you know, on video. And my kids, I, I mean, I would have never thought of seeing a dead body at the age of, of my kids, but they've seen it because of social media and things like that, uh, which is sad. But um, when that happened, uh, the night after that, I felt compelled to write a song because I figured my best contribution to society would be through music. Uh, so I wrote a song fairly quickly. I figured I would I would do a reggae song because reggae, reggae is con- conscious music. And, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to stick along with that theme. And uh, I just I, I never realized I never imagined how many how many lives that that song would. I mean, that song took off as well. I mean, I got hits all over the world and messages, fan mail from people all over the world saying that this this song is, is special. And I mean, it actually played on the radio in Jamaica. My oh, reggae wow. song, like I'm, you know, I'm no special reggae artist, you know, but it, it it had that authentic sound to it, and it was authentic enough, and the message was great enough to to actually play in Jamaica. So that that was kind of cool. Well, let's take a listen to it. Let's this is it. "I Can't Breathe" by Devo. Yeah. can take away my rights, bind my arms, bind my legs, or maybe even take my life, yeah. But you can't take away my pride. Black skin, born of kings and queens, and the creator of the light, yeah. Feel this world ain't made for me. They pay me less and I work more with no investment as you see. I shouldn't have to live in fear. I take a jog and drive my car. It's hateful voices that I hear. I can't breathe. Cause that man done held me down. I can't breathe. I'm losing my life here on this ground. I can't my space is closing in, I yeah. Can't Guess what? And then tomorrow it starts again. I can't breathe. They say I've had much time to heal. Turn on the news and nothing's changed. And then they wonder why we kneel, yeah. But then they call it disrespect. I've heard the cause away from truth and then collect another check, yeah. I've been a victim of this too, yeah. Sixteen years old, my father said, it happened to me, it will happen to you. You would think that they would learn. They go to court, get acquitted, return to work, and still we burn, yeah. Cause that man done held me down, no. I'm losing life here on this ground. I can't breathe. Feel my space is closing in, yeah. And then tomorrow it starts again. Listen to this part right here. Like life don't matter more than you who know. You miss the point of what we say. Black and life they matter too. Yeah. We all must work to make it right. Because the Lord is coming back and He don't see no black or white. Done 
held me down. I can't breathe. I'm losing my life here on this ground, but ain't nobody listening. No. Feel my space is closing in. I can't breathe. And then tomorrow it starts again. I can't breathe. George Floyd, Ray on the Trayvon Martin. So many others. I can't breathe. Kill to senseless acts of violence, y'all. We need to change this world, and it starts with the person in the mirror. Fellas. That was Debo, I Can't Breathe. Tell me a little bit about that version. Okay, so that version was live at the Gettysburg Wine and Music Festival. Um, I haven't even heard this. I was just explaining uh, kind of when the song was playing that um, I recorded that directly from my mixer uh, and saved it to my laptop. And so when I did a search for this song on my laptop, that was the first one that showed up. And I thought it was the album version. So I sent it to Corey and he was like, I was like, you know what? When he just played it earlier, I was like, no, that's a different version. I wonder what this is going to be Sound like. like you. <laughs> but that was amazing. I mean, I thought I thought that mix sounded excellent. Um, Anthony, that was my band, y'all. If you if you don't know, uh, if you never heard my band, uh, that was Anthony Pieraccini, um on the guitar, Devon Cruz on keys, uh, Solera Man the Third on the drums, and I think I think John Christopher was on the bass on that one. Uh, and so uh, that that's what it sounds like live. That's, that's not the great. album version. That's a live version. So that was very special. That's a great lineup too. We love Anthony Perchi. He's yeah, a great Littis fan, boy, great fan guy. of the show. Yeah, great he's right, show. right, right from around the corner. Right? Yeah, quite literally. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, you, you've also had music shown on films. What was that like for you? Well? Oh my goodness. Um. So, I, I would say one of the greatest experiences in my life as an artist was going to the red carpet premiere of that movie in American in Hollywood. It, uh, it was an uh, original film by um, a f- friend of my brother's who, who became a friend of mine, uh, two, two of them actually, they're twins, V twins. Uh, they wrote and uh, produced this movie in American in Hollywood about, uh, and uh, so about, it's about the arts, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a short filmmaker, movie maker uh, and his group of friends uh, he decides to move from New York to California uh, because he thinks that that's going to be a better opportunity for him. Uh, what he realizes is it's Cali's not all it's cracked up to be. There's a lot of uh, a lot of fluff going on there, and it just really it doesn't go the way he plans. So he goes back to New York, reassembles with his buddies, and they just start doing their own thing. Um, so at the red carpet se- ceremony. You know, I had never seen the movie before. So I'm sitting in a movie theater, an AMC film uh, theater. And, you know, right in the middle of like the lovemaking scene, my song comes on. My, a song my brother and I did called What You're Doing to Me. It's on his album, The Hunger Before Greed. Um, and I, I, I composed that song and I wrote the chorus and I have a verse on the song. Um, and I was like, wow, like this is every R&B artist's dream to have a song in the middle of the lovemaking scene. Right, movie. right. <laughs> so, but then I had, what I, what I explained to people was an I made it moment. So at the end of the movie, when the credits are going, you know, you know, all the songs that are in the, in the movie show and the artists that did the songs, here comes E-Will and Debo, uh, what you're doing to me, you know, in the credit scroll. And I'm like, man, I made it. You know, this is where, I, this is where I want to be. I am, where I want to be. And so where do you go from now? So, so my goal in music has never really been to make a lot of money or whatever. My, I, I, I just, my goal has always been, see, I write really positive stuff with good messages that, that connect with people and their real life experience. And so my goal has always been to share these messages with people all over the world and give them encouragement to, to keep going, you know, um, and I feel like I've I've done that. You know, I've got fans in all 50 states and uh, 26 countries around the world. I get fan mail from places I've never been, you know, uh, countries I've never been, uh, you know, and, and several times I've gotten messages from people saying, hey, I was like really, really on the brink of the end of my life. And I heard one of your songs and, and, it, and, it, and it saved my life. And, and th- that's that's why I do it. There's nothing, no greater reward 
than knowing that you something you did either positively impacted someone's life or even saved it. That's just like, I mean, that, that makes it all well worth it, man. So what is something you have yet to do that you still want to do with the music industry? I, I want to tour. I want to go and, and, and perform in Europe overseas. I've mm-hmm. never performed overseas. My music does well over there. I have a big fan base in the UK. I have a big fan base in Spain. I have a big fan base in Brazil. Um, that song, Do It, charted in Brazil. I'm like, oh, I don't wow. even know how that happened. It's not in Portuguese or nothing like that. So, I mean, I don't speak any other language. I speak a little bit of Spanish, but um, but just, you know, Reverb Nation keeps the demographics of who's listening. And so it, it always boggles me that when I see, like, you know, like where these people are listening to my stuff. Like, wow, how did it get out there? But uh, I always wanted to go. If I went out to the UK, they'd know me out there. It's just a matter of, you know. Getting it all together. Yeah, spending all the money up right to travel the band over there. I know I would make tenfold of what I spent, but, you know, to throw five people on a plane with equipment and then, you know, have the places. I mean, I it's something, it's a dream of mine that I, I feel like I'm going to do one day. But I, I just got to start talking to people. I, I know some people now out there, uh, so maybe, maybe, maybe that, maybe that's coming. We'll see. Do you have any music coming out? Um, I actually, I'm, I'm already working on a new album, man. All like, right, yeah. The super villain just won all these albums. I'm, I've already got, I already put out, I already got like four new songs. Um, so I, I guess I got to do like all my albums usually have like 13 songs on, like 11 to 13, which is a lot more than most people. Um, but. So I I I I I'm not halfway there yet, but I've got some good stuff, man. Yeah. Some good stuff that I'm, I can't wait for people to hear. Um, you want to give a little bit of a teaser to it? Uh, I don't know, man. I I I've put some stuff out there, like just kind of some studio sessions. Um, I was working on a song called um, what song was that? Uh, hmm. Oh, four questions. Uh, so I was working on a song called Four Questions, and I and I just put a little snippet of this studio session on there. It has a real Motown sound to it. Mm. Uh, it's a duet. I still got to find a female vocalist to go on the song. So all you female vocalists out there, if if you know, if you want to be on a song with Debo, let me know. Uh, you know, I'll I'll listen to what you got and I'll, I'll make a pick. But uh, I haven't really selected who I want want to be on the song yet. Um, which is something I'm very I'm very patient with when it comes to selecting people like the Garrett Schultz band. I was like I met them at the CPMAs and I'm like this is the dude this is the group that I want on this song because I had this country song in my head. Uh, so I've got that I've got um, got a couple other songs that you know you guys are just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, I, 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 I'm tossing around a few album names uh, already. Yeah. Uh, I already know what I'm gonna wear to the CPMAs next year. So. I got to start working on that. I make all my co- I make a lot of my costumes and stuff that I wear. You still have your super villain? I costume? do, man. Uh, this year I won best dressed, and I don't know if it was based off of what I was wearing this year or or, or just year. or just how I dress in general. Oh, I see. Because um, you know, when it comes to shows and showmanship, don't nobody do it like Debo. That's 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 kind of my motto. Nobody do it. That can't no nobody do it like Debo. That's what I say. Um, so I, I like to, I'm known for dressing real sharp. At my shows, you know, sharp as a tack, nice shoes, nice suit. Um, when y'all come out for my birthday bash on the on the nineteenth um, at Hollywood Casino Grantville, wait do you see what I'm wearing there? Uh, I got a new cane for that. May nineteenth. May nineteenth. So at the Hollywood Casino. Open- Hollywood Casino Grantville. I'll be there yeah. May nineteenth. I'm throwing Debo's birthday bash as a concert, free concert. Um, so anybody that wants to come celebrate with me on my 40th birthday, my 40th birthday is actually on Mother's Day. And whenever my birthday falls on Mother's Day, I pretty much forfeit my day for my mom. So mm. it's like I no longer matter to anybody on that day. But um, I think maybe, I don't know, people might acknowledge me a little bit this year. I don't know, because it's a it's a milestone. Right. So I, when does that start? So, uh, well, so, so, okay. So I'm, I'm I'm interested in going. That's why. <laughs> well, well, we we uh, we perform from eight to twelve. There's three sixty minute sets and two thirty minute breaks. So um, you come on out uh, eight o'clock on on May nineteenth. It's it's a Friday, I believe. Yeah. That's um, 
to the uh, H Lounge at Hollywood Casino in Grantville. And uh, we're going to put on a show. Like, nobody does a show like us. Like, our show is interactive. It's intimate. You know, I like to get down in the crowd. Even in my current state, after having five knee surgeries, I'll cane myself down there and, and get in the crowd. I teach them my Debo dance. You know, uh, they learn to dance. And then, you know, we do line dances. And it's a, it's a, it's a fun experience. I want people to leave my show feeling like they saw an experience they had an experience unlike anything anybody else is doing i don't like to do what everybody else is doing if you haven't noticed by the way i dress at these awards ceremonies yeah <laughs> when i saw when i saw you i didn't know who you were uh until the cpmas and i was like i gotta get that guy on the show. <laughs> yeah man i couldn't go five feet without somebody wanting to snap a picture and that, that's what I, I like to cause a splash on the red carpet and every year i do so it started you know at the first CPMAs, I was wearing, my mom was my date. We had this sparkling, you know, we were had like a black and silver theme. And I was the first guy to wear sequins at this thing. No other guy had sequins that year. The next year, more dudes had, were wearing sequins because they saw what Debo was wearing and they had to step their game up. So I stepped my game up. The next year I had, um, I wore this uh, two, that purple. two-tone purple yeah, sequins yeah, yeah. thing, right? It was like black and purple. The one that's that's on the promo for, yeah. for this show. Yes, yes. I wore that at the second CPMAs and 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 caused a splash on the red carpet then. So then the third year, I, I had my date, and we were matching purple. I had purple and gold suit. Um, And, and that was even a, a step up. So And how did you go about designing that supervillain okay, outfit? Okay, so, so this year, since my album was nominated for album of the year, I said, you know what, I'm going to go as – I'm going to full supervillain mode, you know? And so on my first album, I created this, this costume on the superhero album. Um, and so, you know, uh, when, when Fernando and I created the uh, cover for the, for the supervillain album, it's the same costume that I was wearing on the superhero costume, or uh, superhero album. Uh, and so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to create this thing to the best of my ability, maybe add a few m- modifications, you know? Um, anybody that saw me, I had lights everywhere. I had LEDs glowing. I had on these gloves that had lasers on them. So when I walked through a dark, uh, audit- auditorium, I could shoot lasers all over the place. And, you know, it was, it was awesome. So, uh, you know, I, I it's been, it took me about four months to do. I did, you know, whenever I would have some time, I'd kind of do some things, you know, I, I'm a beast with a hot glue gun. I was going to say, well, <laughs> I don't sew, but I use a hot glue gun like yeah, none other. electrical engineering probably came into a lot yeah, of, a lot yeah, of play yeah. I, I wired a lot of things into that suit. Um, and, you know, I, I, I love Halloween. I love making my own costumes. So it was just second nature when it came to making that super villain suit. Uh, I, I might I might have to bring that out. You know, I'm not I'm not giving any surprises or hints or anything like that. But it, it's going to you're going to see that again. Uh, you kind of have to. <laughs> I got to bring point. that back. That's and, you know, like suit. when I when I, I kind of made my entrance at the pre-party. Right. Mm. And I, I, I threw the doors open. I was like, behold. And everybody turned around and like somebody doesn't yell behold in public. Very <laughs> right. 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 So uh, they saw when I came in and everybody just was like in awe, you know, and, and I was in mentally I was in supervillain mode. I was like, you know, I was like, greetings, peasants, you know. <laughs> You know, speaking down to everybody. Right, right, right. And they just ate it up and they loved it, you know. And so, like, when I got to the CPMAs from the pre-show or the, pre, the pre-party, the I was still in that supervillain mode. And, um, you know, everybody was a peasant. Everybody was beneath me. Everybody was disgusting and, and vile creatures, you know. So, uh, you know, I, and, and they loved it. You know, they understood the sarcasm. Yeah, it, I don't it, really, it was, it was a joke. Yeah. I don't really walk around thinking like that. I don't right. think I'm above anybody, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that at all, but, uh, it went along with the theme it's of what I, the it's character. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Debo to an extent is a character and, you know, something else comes out of me when I'm on stage. That's not typically there, you know, every day, Delon, you know, I, I don't want to be bothered by too many people. I'm, I'm very much a loner. You know, I'm kind of shy, you know, which is why it took me 22 years to sing in front of my mom. But, um, you know, Debo, when I'm on stage, man, something else comes out of me that's not normally there. And it just, uh, you know, and, and it takes me a while to come off of that. Mm. Like after I'm done performing, it, it might take a few hours to, to come back down to earth. But I, I transcend my, my normal self when I'm out there. 
Well, hey, we got a few more minutes left, so I got the questions I'd like to ask all my guests. Yes. And you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. And so I'd like to ask all my all my brothers and sisters in faith this question. What is worship to you, or where do you find yourself most in tune with God? Well, that's a that's a deep question. I, th- I think I think it's important for everyone to have a relationship, a personal relationship with God. Um, and you can't go by what anybody says. You got to go by what what what's inside of your spirit, you know. Um, so so that that's something um, that I've, I've I've always had. I've always seeked seeked seek God, seek the information, seek, you know, you, and, and the important thing is you got to read, you got to read. You can't just take what somebody tells you. Read your Bible. Yes. You can't just take what somebody tells you or, or, or a preacher or, 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 or another person. You got to read. And another thing is when someone asks you a Bible question or a spiritual question, or when you hear a spiritual question being asked, if the person answering says, I think that that's the wrong answer. You need to say, well, what does the Bible say? Let's go to the Bible and look and see what that says. Mm-hmm. I think that is going to lead to a wrong answer because then that's personal. You're, you're, you're giving personal. You're putting yourself into the Bible. Yes, of yes. Having the Bible speak to you. Go to the Word of God and see what it says. And then there's no room for interpretation. And even though I think some people over-interpret, over-interpret the Bible. Um, <laughs> and, and it's meant to be read like a child. Yeah. So I hope that addressed it. What else you got? Well, well the question. Where do you find yourself most in tune of God? Okay, so explain that a little bit. So where do you find, like, for some people it's in nature when they just feel God, the presence of God. Hmm. Or or when they're singing their songs, it just feels like oh, I've been tuned. You, you know, you know when when I'm when I'm singing in church, that that that's what does it for me. And and my fa- my father passed away uh, in 2021, which um, his birthday is the day I released him. The supervillain album. I moved it back. I moved my album back several months to release it on his birthday to pay honor honor to him. And he was a great singer. And um, anytime we would sing in the church, he and I were song leaders in the church. We kind of like alternated weeks, but just hearing the songs that we would sing, hearing his voice, here you know, and getting the opportunity to sing, and hearing the congregation sing back. That's that's when I feel closest to God, and that's that's when I feel in tune because it don't matter how good of a singer you are or not if you're singing. From your heart and from your spirit, that's pleasing to God. I was going to say, uh, one of the Wesleyan brothers, I think it was John Wesley, if, if you're not singing with all your whole heart, you know, your whole mind, body, soul, and spirit, you shouldn't sing. There you go. There you go. You know, and and you don't have to be good. No, you don't have to be good. You don't it have to be matter. good. You can be tone deaf. but It's, if all, joy to, it's all music to God's ears. Yeah, yes, yes. Glory, God deserves the glorification, and, 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 and one of the ways we do that is through song. And uh, if you're doing it with all your heart and you're participating in that in that worship service, then hey, it don't matter, and it don't matter what no one else thinks. About there you go, either. there you go. So one of the last questions I got for you is one of what is one of the worst or funniest things that ever happened to you on stage? Oh man, there's been a few uh, a few things from like power going out and stuff like that. Uh, I will say one year at the Gettysburg Wine Festival, uh, some drunk ladies that had several glasses of wine in there <laughs> made their way to the stage and they, they, you know, they're dancing, but just, just no balance involved whatsoever. No grace. Uh, and, um, you know, they started like knocking stuff over and, and my guitarist at the time, Nick Carruthers, uh, they knocked his headphones off and they fell on the ground and, you know, but you got to keep going. The show must yeah, go on. Yeah, so right. like, he just kept, kept a smile and kept going. He couldn't hear nothing, but, uh, you know, I get I, that, that was probably the worst. You know, it wasn't that even that bad. I, shoot, American Idol was a bad experience, but right. Um, but this, the, as far as performing live, that was probably one of the most memorable situations. Well, I want to know what you do when the power goes out. You know what? Yeah, you, you, you kind of wait till it goes back on, but I think when that happens, you know, we kind of joke around, like you know, no music, yeah, no yeah. music. You know, we, we just keep the crowd. You know, going so they don't get too agitated, and just hope that uh, you know that the uh, the the sound crew can get everything back. I was gonna say the worst thing you could ever do when something wrong goes out is have silence. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't want silence. <laughs> so we find a way. If I have to sing a cappella, I'll sing a cappella. You know, and and I perform the same way for sixty thousand people that I do for sixty people. It's no different. You get the same energy. You know, no matter how big or small the crowd is. So. If the power goes out, the show's going to go on. 
Well, with all that said, Diva, where can people find you at? Oh, my goodness. You can go on Facebook. Search Music by DBO, all one word, no spaces, or use the at symbol, at Music by DBO. You can go on, uh, you know, very easy for me, Instagram, at Music by DBO. Um, so Instagram.com forward slash at Music by DBO. Same thing with uh, Twitter. Twitter's there, actually, D Music by D underscore BO. Um, YouTube, Music by DBO. Um, and you got your website, too. My website is d-bomusic.com. Make sure you go there. You can find all my albums. You can download them, buy them. Uh, there's there's videos and, and and pictures and all that good stuff, all things Debo. So make sure you like me on Facebook or, or you know all these avenues, and you'll be in the know of be in the know of all things Debo. That's what I like to say. Be in the know of all things Debo. Yes, sir. And this is the Story Podcast. My name is Corey Rosen. If you want to find out more about me, and my music, and all, everything else that I do here at the Story Podcast, go over to CoreyRosenProductions.com. That's C-O-R-Y-R-O-S-E-N Productions.com. If you've liked this show, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Do it, baby. It really does help us out. And we have some exciting things coming up tomorrow. You know the Jess Zimmerman band, don't you? Yes, I do. Jess Zimmerman herself is coming over to the studio, and we're going to have a nice little chat, catch up on catch up on what she's been doing. She just went over to Nashville to record her new, her new album. And we're going to hear two songs off of that new album. Awesome. Right here tomorrow. So be, tune into that at 10 o'clock. Then Wednesday, we have Matt Friedman. He's a, a, a huge country star up from the Reading area. Excited to talk to him about all of his stuff. And then we got Sean Murphy coming in Thursday. Mr. Motivation. He is a guy. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Sir Dominique Jordan. Are you? No, familiar? no, no. First time. So these group of people, they're, they, um, they go around the urban centers and talk to the you know the poverty stricken the uh, to the poorest parts of the, of the city and go over there and give motivation to them and excellent help them work through. I need to get in touch struggles. with him because that's up my alley, man. Yeah, absolutely. He's a uh, local, I do believe, uh, maybe Philly, but he's around the area. I'll get you in contact with Sir Dominique. He's he's definitely Lancaster based because uh, they do some similar things and uh, they're spoken word artists as well. I did something like that called the Extreme Tour. We toured Nashville and went went to the projects and put on free concerts and fed the community. And it's nothing like that. Man. It's nothing like that. And it's really great, really great stories to tell there. Then this Sunday, we have Darker with Daniel. You know. Yes. Yes. And we're having Daniel on this show. To get to talk about all things Darker with Daniel and Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast now that he does. Yes. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk to, talk to him about that. And we got Aaron Pearson part of anchor n which is an acoustic pop metal band interesting i gotta is, hear that which is very interesting because if if you think about pop and metal it ain't acoustic no, 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 no. <laughs> so <I'm> very <laughs> do your thing do your thing yeah <laughs> talking about doing things like no one else right yes sir and then we got next uh next monday we got Lael, it was an incredible singer songwriter uh rapping artist from the lancaster area so i'm super excited to talk to them and get their story as well. With all that said, if you want to be involved, here we got several things going on. We got our singer songwriter studio. That I told you about that. Yes, Chris. yes, I'm I'm down, man. I'm down. And we we grab three or four other artists in the area, and we we it's a challenge. We I want to say force, but that's a challenge. We we get them on to write a song within an hour on the spot on the spot. And we had our first one this past Monday, and it went really well. Yeah, yeah, I got to hear that too. I I'm, hear, I'm so that. excited for for that song. And so we're going to be doing a lot more of those. If you want to be in touch, CoreyRoseProductions.com. We got our single and album reviews that are getting back into swing where we where we choose three singles or an album from the area. We grab another artist from the area. We, we sit them down and we just go over what, what our thoughts are on, on the – on the album or or singles, man, you gotta have me back, man. You gotta have me back. I'm hearing all these things, man. It's just, yeah, we'll have you on for one of those single do it. single Let's reviews. Do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Do it. Do it, Debo. Do it. Do it. Hashtag do it, baby. With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.